What is up everyone? Jeremy here. Today is a really great day. Why? Because Jens Bogren of Bogren Digital has blessed us with an amazing new drum sample pack and we are going to dive in, check this thing out, see how these drum samples sound in a mix, check out the new NKI contact instrument. We're going to check all this out, so let's jump in. For those of you who may not be aware, Jens Bogren is the incredible producer behind these drum samples. They have been battle tested on world class metal albums for over two decades. So if that tells us anything, it's that these are likely some of the highest quality and best sounding samples you're going to find, period. All right, so let's briefly talk about what comes in the pack. And in fact, there are two different packages that you can purchase. There is a standard pack and the deluxe pack. So in the standard pack, you're gonna get eight snares, six kicks, and three tom sets, as well as wave files and TCI files, which include wet, dry, and blended. And in the deluxe version, you're gonna get everything that comes in the standard package, as well as two additional snares, two additional kicks, a six-piece tom set, side stick and spike samples, an NKI MIDI instrument for triggering these samples via MIDI, and unblended and individual microphones in both the wave and TCI file formats. All right, and so just real brief, I've talked about the things you're gonna get in this package, and those include wave files, TCI files, and an NKI instrument. What are the difference between all these things? Well, the WAV files are exactly that. They're WAV format audio files. You load those into things like Logic's trigger plugin. Now, with the TCI files, those are specific to Slate Audio's Trigger 2 plugin. You load those in and you can actually select multiple of them and they're dynamic. It's a really great plugin. If you're not familiar with it, highly recommend you go look that up. It's mainly meant to be used to augment, say, live acoustic recorded drums that you want to help add additional B for character to the original recorded sound of those acoustic drums. And the NKI instrument, well, it's exactly that. It's a new contact instrument. It does require the full version of Contact 6. If you're using the free Contact player, it will not work. It will just run in demo mode. But if you have the full Contact 6, you can load this up in a new MIDI software instrument track, create your MIDI piano roll, select the individual note you want the samples to be triggered on, and then trigger these samples using this instrument. And it does take velocity into account so you do really get a dynamic sound to them but just like any samples if you're using high velocities especially on faster parts it's going to sound robotic like a machine gun you don't want that all right so there's obviously a ton we could talk about with this pack we could talk about using the wave files using things like the logic trigger plugin we could talk about using slate audios trigger 2 with the tci files we could talk about the nki instrument there's a ton, but what I'm gonna focus on is how I plan on using these samples in my workflow and in my mixes because that's relevant to me and hopefully I believe I believe it'll be pretty relevant to you as well, especially if you're using MIDI drums like I am and I know a lot of you who are watching these videos are also using MIDI drums because I've seen all the questions and I've seen how popular my, my programming or mixing drums using GGD Invasion video is. So with that, I'm gonna go through how I use these samples in my workflow. All right, with that, let's go ahead and pull up Logic and take a look at how I'm gonna be using these samples in my workflow and my mixes. And that specifically is going to be using the NKI MIDI instrument because I use MIDI drums and I program all my drums. Uh, and what I specifically use is GGD Invasion. I use it in all of my stuff these days. And one quick note is a lot of you may be watching this going, well, wait, <laughs> GGD Invasion is incredible. Why would you ever wanna use samples with this? Well. Two quick notes on that. One, Invasion actually ships with samples included. And if you're not aware, if you open it up and look at it, there are actually samples that you can trigger alongside the drums that come with it, the acoustic drums that were recorded with it. And second, 
because maybe for a certain mix, I want to change up the characteristics or the body or the beef or just the overall tone of say like the kick or the snare or both or even the toms. And this is a great way to help augment some of that sound or the tone of the drums and just add a new tonal characteristic or, or flavor, if you will, to the drums. So with that, let's take a look at how I do this. So the first thing is I always, always, always wanna make sure I'm mixing the main core of the drums, like the actual, it's not a live recording, it's the MIDI drums, but I wanna make sure that the actual, like GGD Invasion itself is mixed and sounds good without any samples or anything like that. The samples are gonna come in later to help change up the tone of the drums or change the character or the feel of the drums. Uh, and that's how I'm using it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mute the samples that I've got on here already. We're gonna mute those, and then this is what the drums sound like as is. So you can hear, they sound really, really good on their own. They're fitting really well with the mix, in fact. But what I want to do is explore what sort of options I have with samples to change up the sound of these drums and see if I can get them to even blend even better in this mix. So that's what we're going to do now with these samples. And so how do we do that? Well, the first thing we do is we create new software instrument tracks. And you can see I have three of them here. I have one called Kick Trigger. I have one called Snare T Trigger for Snare Top and one snare snap trigger. And that is a little secret weapon that Jens has, has blessed us with that I'm gonna go into in just a little bit here. But let's start with the kick. So I have this snare or this software instrument here for the kick. And if we load up contact and we've got the new NKI instrument up here, uh, you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight kicks we can choose from. And right here, you can select the individual MIDI note that you want this to trigger on from your MIDI piano roll. And so if I open up the kick trigger, you can see what I've done, why I have more than just, you know, say C0 here, which is the kick. I have, you know, snare and cymbals and stuff. That's because all you have to do is copy over your MIDI file from your main programmed drums into this kick trigger uh, software instrument here and just select the note that you want it to trigger on. And for me, that's the kick, that's, I'm done. I don't, I don't even have to worry about getting rid of all the other stuff, it's not gonna trigger. You can get rid of it if it bothers you, it doesn't bother me, so I'm gonna leave it. So here we have direct miking and ambience, which is essentially a room mic, and you can blend those. And so what we're gonna do is just kind of start playing with these triggers and the direct and ambience miking and just kind of see what it sounds like. And to do this, I'm going to solo the overall drums so we can hear it somewhat in context, but because of the bass and the guitars take up so much space in the mix, it's gonna be kind of hard to hear this. So I'm gonna just solo the drums and I'm gonna unmute my kick trigger and play this back and just kind of flip through some of these kicks and play with the direct and the ambience miking and just kind of see what it sounds like.
All right, so as you can hear, that it, it's not changing things drastically. This is just meant to add a slightly new characteristic to the sound of the kick. I'm not completely replacing it. As you heard there when I muted the sample, the original kick is still the majority of what you're hearing, but the sample helps add a new stop, a new tone to the to the kick. It changes it up, gives it a different feel. And uh, one thing I do know about the ambience and the room miking on on this kicks is it is a really really smooth rounded like good sounding room mic that they've got here so I'm, I'm actually i've left more ambience than i probably normally would just because it actually sounds really really good i like the way that it sounds i'm not soloing these individual samples because uh, again, I wanna show you how I plan on using these samples in my workflow and my mixes. And I don't I don't necessarily care so much about how the sample sounds on its own because I'm never gonna use it on its own, ever, never. It's always going to be blended with something else. So that's why you're going to always hear me throughout the rest of this video sampling these or playing them back mixed with and blended with the original instrument. So one other quick note that I wanna make here is when you're using samples, there you have to pay attention to phase issues they're going to happen rest assured it's gonna happen there are a few ways that you can get around this uh the first thing is you can adjust the actual tone of the sample and that will actually shift the audio wave format in slight ways enough to get around those phase phase issues and I've actually done that here just slightly by like a quarter of whatever this is, a tune. Uh, so if you pull it up, it just kind of jumps by whole numbers. One, two, three, four. And I found that that's more than a change than I really needed. Uh, so in, in some of these cases, it was just kind of like 0 0.25, I could change it. And I noticed it got around some of the phasing issues. Um, one of the ones that really stuck out that sounded like it had a, a, a potential issue here, unless it was just the sample, was this plumbus. So let's play this back. Yeah, so notice immediately, as this starts playing back, all the low end, all the beef in our kick just completely fell out. And when I muted the sample, we got it back from the original kick. That's obviously a phase alignment issue here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play with this tune a little bit and see if I can get around that phasing issue without changing the tone uh, drastically of, of this sample. So let's, uh, let's see what I can get here. What I'm hearing with this plumbus kick is this is probably a shorter sample, uh, uh, just a really fast, spiky, maybe a, a real snappy sounding kick, uh, which is why we're not getting a lot of low end out of it anyways. And this one really has some phase alignment issues with my original kick, and I had to pull the tune up to about four, plus four, before I started getting some of that low end back, which obviously tells me that we're addressing some of the phase alignment. Um, one of the other things that I found that that can help with these phase alignment issues is to phase reverse. So if, if you have a, a plugin, if you're using Logic, you have phase reverse. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset the tune and then we'll go and we'll pull up the little mixer here and see my channel strip. And so for me, I, I, I've been using this uh, SSL channel strip two plugin here, and this has a phase reverse right here. I can just click that and that reverses the phase. However, if you don't have a channel strip plugin or another one that you use frequently that has a phase reverse, then you can just pull up the built-in gain plugin and you have it right here. You can either just do the left, just do the right or do both. And that is phase invert right there. And so let's give that a try and see if this works.
So right there, immediately notice when I inverted the phase on this uh, kick sample, we got all that low end back and all that low end B from our kick drum coming back through. Yeah, massive difference. So obviously that's another way you can get around those phase issues as well. So I'm gonna go back to this one that I landed on before, which was the harder please. And this is the one that I think I'm gonna roll with. Let's hear it one more time. Yeah, I, I really dig the way that sounds blended with this GGD kick. All right, so let's move on to the snare drum now. And what I'm gonna do for this is solo the snare top from GGD and with the snare top trigger from the Jens Bogren samples pack. Why am I doing that? Well, because I'm actually not looking to add so much of the sample uh, kind of as I did with the kick. Uh, I really, really liked the way that that sample blended with the original kick and it added a new characteristic to the tone. I really like the sound of the snare from GGD, so I'm not looking to change it as much, but I wanna add a new characteristic to it. I wanna add some, some new flavor to it. So what I'm gonna do is Solo these two so that you can hear it a little bit better than having all of the drums in there Which makes it a little bit more difficult to hear and I'm gonna flip through these snares I'll play with the direct miking in the room and ambience miking as I did with the kick and we'll kind of see what we get here And then we'll do an a B comparison at the end with kind of where I land So right there is an example of what I'm talking about. That is a perfect example. So the, the original GGD snare is still coming through. It's still strong, as you just heard in those A-B comparisons where I muted the sample. But this wanker sample, <laughs> you gotta love the names in these packs, uh, again, has a beautiful room sound to it. I love the ambience in this. So I've actually gone with a little bit more ambience than I have with the direct miking here uh, because it's such a rounded, smooth sound and it adds a, a nice characteristic to this snare and I really, really like it. And so again, here's a quick AB example of muting the trigger with the original snare from GGD. I mean, you can hear that, that is tremendous. The The original GGD snare sounds great on its own, but when you add this sample in, it takes it to a whole new level of, of just amazing sound. And it's not even doing a ton. It's adding some beautiful ambience from that room miking. It's adding a new, uh, a, a new characteristic to the, the actual snap of the snare. It's really good, I like this a lot. So I'm gonna stick with this and unmute this snare and just kind of see what this sounds like in our drum mix here. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot. All right, and so the last thing I wanna to touch on here is Jens's secret weapon that he has blessed us all with, which I think is absolutely awesome of him to do this. So this is the Spike Me In sample. And this is, it's literally just a super, super high-pitched, really crisp spike sound. Uh, and you're probably asking yourself, well, let's hear it. But I don't want to just play back any of these samples in isolation uh, because 
I feel like for one, that's not fair to Bargren Digital because I don't want people to just go and rip the audio from my video and just use those as if, you know, you can just do that and drop it into your mixes and it's gonna sound good with just a static sample. It's not, so don't even try it. Um, but second, because in the mix is what truly matters, but I'll turn it up pretty loud so you can obviously hear what it's doing. Um, and in the documentation that comes with these samples, it actually says to, to change up the actual sound of this Spike Me In sample, you can use some heavy saturation on it. And it actually almost gives it like a barrel tone. And it does. And so what I've got here is I've got actually two layers of saturation. I am using the BX Saturator here, V2 from Brainworks and Plugin Alliance. Um, and this adds some nice snappy saturation to the top end. And then I'm using the uh, black box uh, design here from uh, or from Analog Design and, and Plugin Alliance as well. And I found that really did add a new nice characteristic to this sample. So I'm gonna unmute this one and let me pull up my uh, channel strip here and I'll really kind of bring up the volume so you can hear this and what it sounds like but it does add a really, really strong, crispy snap to the snare. So if you're ever using these samples in like an actual acoustic drum situation, maybe you're using Slate Digital's Trigger 2 to replace or augment some of the original drum sounds, this can really go a long ways to adding a nice new crack to the snare. So check this out. I mean, do you do you hear how like the snap and the crack on that snare is just cutting right through this mix right now? So again, I'm gonna play this back into an A B so you can hear the massive difference of this. That is absolutely awesome. And I plan on using this quite a bit, uh, especially maybe as like an accent for different parts, maybe not necessarily through like the entire, uh, you know, through the entire mix or through an entire track, but maybe really where I want some accents to kind of just really cut through, that's probably something I'll start using more. But I'm gonna just leave it on right there for this little audio sample. And now what I'm gonna do is play things back with the samples on and then mute them all and do an A-B comparison with and without the samples. So here we go. Massive, massive difference with just using subtle amounts, small amounts of these samples blended with the original GGD kit. Absolutely incredible what this just did to those drums. All right, everyone, that is going to wrap up this video. I hope you are digging the new Bargren Digital Drum Samples Pack as much as I am, and I hope this video was useful for you in me showing you how I plan on using these samples and especially the new NKI MIDI instrument in my workflow and in my mixes. If it was helpful for you and if you're digging these drum samples, go ahead and hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to my channel. That button is right down below as well. Hit the comments and let me know your thoughts on these drum samples and the new NKI instrument and the workflow that I've demonstrated here. And as always, thank you for watching and thank you for your support.